Good morning. So one of the advantages of being the last speaker is that most of the things have already been said here. Um, so I will not bore you with the stuff that's already been said. I instead, focus on some of the new points that uh, perhaps need to be brought out. OK. So I'm going to be talking about sustainability. So uh, there's obviously a natural conflict between sustainability and preservation. So in some sense, I'll be talking not so much about preservation, but how you can get away without preserving, in some sense. Okay. So let's see. All right, so preservation obviously has a significant environmental footprint, and so these things have already been talked about. There is an issue of storage media life, because discs, for example, last for three to four years. You have to replace them. And what do you do with all the garbage that you can break? Uh, there is obviously the question of housing and access management of the media. There is the uh, robot that you see there uh, picking up the tapes. And then, of course, the data centers that you need for processing uh, and for uh, online storage. OK, so let me start out by asking the question, what do we want to preserve? Most certainly, we don't want to preserve data. We want to preserve information. We want to preserve data that is useful. In fact, what you would ideally like to preserve is the knowledge. Of course, the real challenge is how do you preserve knowledge or the kind of knowledge that you might need to derive without preserving the raw data. Okay. Now, you can do that to some extent. You can throw out parts of the data that are not interesting, but in general, that's a huge challenge. OK, so I'm going to talk about three sustainability issues. So first of all, as uh, has been talked about many times uh, this morning, that it's not enough that you just store the data. Well, the real value of the data is what you can do with it and what kind of insights you can gain from the data. And therefore, the processing is very important. And, there, and as a result, if you're talking about sustainability, you want to reduce the environmental impact of the data centers. The second one is has to do with the data itself. If you look at the data in the wild out there, there's a lot of junk there. And the question is, can we get rid of that junk and preserve only what we really need to preserve? And the third one is, there is obviously a trade-off between keeping everything and processing uh, everything from scratch versus you know, keeping partially processed data, and perhaps not necessarily the original data. And there are obviously sustainability trade-offs in terms of computing impact versus the storage impacts and so on. OK, so you've already heard a lot about data centers. So I will not spend a whole lot of time on data center. In particular, I will not talk a lot about the power aspect of the data centers. We already know that the data centers consume about 2% of their total electricity. A lot of the power gets wasted, and so on and so forth. It continues to increase. However, that's not the only aspect that we need to worry about. In addition to power, well, data centers are physical entities. They use a lot of materials. They use a lot of water. Uh, there are manufacturing costs. So if you look at data centers in terms of their overall environmental impact, for example, the carbon impact, well, there is a lot more impact than just the energy that you consume in processing. And that's why it's, uh, it's a good idea to not just look at the energy, but look at the entire environmental impact of the data center. In fact, the energy itself really does not matter. Uh, it's so much, what really matters is the carbon footprint. Imagine for a moment, let's say, that your data center was being entirely operated on renewable sources which had low carbon impact. Okay. In that case, uh, well, it's not so much how much energy you use, but ultimately how much is the carbon. OK, let me give you some quick examples. So if you look at the power distribution in infrastructure in a data center, 
uh, starting from the transmission lines all the way up to the point where you can actually use the power. Well, there is a lot of infrastructure there, and it has an impact. Okay. And what if you could reduce that? And so there is this idea which has been which is being investigated quite actively these days. Uh, my research also includes that, which is that use the renewable energy as opposed to just using energy from the grid. Well, what are the challenges? The renewable energy often is very and therefore, there might be times where you don't have enough energy available. Then what do you do? So to do that, well, you need some adaptation. You should be able to adapt your data center to the available energy. Cooling infrastructure, again, huge environmental impact. So uh, as already been talked about, that you operate the data center without any cooling. You operate them uh, using uh, your ambient uh, air, for example. But that, of course, has a challenge that there might be things that might be overheating. And as a result, you cannot do all the processing that you want to do. So there is a question of adaptation there. Overdesign. This is another topic that's often overlooked. We love to overdesign things just to be safe. So for example, if you need a thousand uh, watts in your uh, server, you will probably buy not a thousand watt power supply, but probably a two thousand or even a three thousand watt power supply, just in case. And what happens uh, when you do that is that you're operating a lot of these uh, devices and systems at much lower utilization than their full capacity, and they tend to behave very, very inefficiently. So for example, a power supply, when it's operating at 20% of its capacity, it will probably give you only 50% efficiency. Whereas if you were to operate it near 80% of its capacity, it will be more like 85% efficient. OK, so again, uh, if you were to cut down this over design, then you need adaptation for periods where you run out of capacity. Okay, so this led to uh, this notion of energy adaptive computing that I've been looking at uh, for the last couple of years. And the idea is that you replace over design with the right sizing along with a smart adaptation. And there are many instances of this. You can do this within a data center. You can do it among the clients. You can do it for the entire infrastructure. There are a lot of challenges in being able to do this. Obviously, uh, you want to be able to uh, maintain the processing and the quality of service requirements, uh, and at the same time, uh, try to minimize um, the carbon imprint. OK, so that's all I'm going to say. Um, I will not bore you with any research results, uh, a lot of results that are available, some of them, some of the papers you can see uh, on my website. But basically, that's the whole idea that we've been looking at for the last couple of years, that if you uh, look at this from this energy adaptation perspective and coordinating the use of energy across these different systems and subsystems, you can actually uh, significantly reduce the environmental impact of processing. So let me switch over to another topic. Again, a topic that has been talked about. Uh, well, uh, the data has been growing, obviously. And it's not only the data generation rate that has been growing, but also the total amount of accumulated data has been growing at an exponential rate. However, if you look at this data, what turns out is that more data you have, perhaps there are more junk in that data. So the amount of useful information okay, uh, that you have in the data is going down. And what can we do about this? Well, the first challenge is how do you define what is useful? It's always a challenge. But still, there are a number of things you can do. Now, along with that, there are some challenges uh, in terms of increased power consumption, the, uh, all the disk drive that you need to throw out, and, um, and then the cumulative impact, because people, once they store the data, they don't want to delete it, which is not sustainable. OK, so there are a number of opportunities, um, data reduction. You have opportunities within 
individual objects, objects being your web pages, files, databases, and so on. You have opportunities at the level of your administrative domain, which could be your house, your office, uh, your business, and so on, and uh, all across the administrative domains. Okay. Um, so there are a number of uh, options available. Compression, compressive sampling, basically keeping the samples that you really need. Delta encoding, if you already have some old data, what is the difference from the old data? Um, very often people bundle the VM along with the data so that all you have to do is just uh, transfer that somewhere and start running the VM. So there's a lot of duplication there. Um, you can do a lot of deduplication uh, across uh, the objects within the administrative domain. Of course, across the administrative domains, it becomes a lot more challenging. Now, in doing all of this, there are a number of trade-offs. There's a trade-off of storage versus data movement, which takes energy and, of course, time. Uh, moving petabytes of data is not easy. In fact, you don't want to do it. Uh, and versus processing. Uh, there is issues of fidelity versus cost. You could have uh, reduced representations, which will be uh, more effective from a sustainability perspective, but then there's a question of what are you using. And then there are issues of access, privacy, and security across domains. OK, finally, I'd also like to talk a little bit about the role of the content creators, and we are all content creators. We all behave very badly. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we can use some best practices to really re reduce the growth of data. So we just take a file and just blindly send it to 10 of our friends, and they just download this file and then forget all about it. I don't know what they need it, that file is always there. Okay, so, so that's something that uh, I guess we as content creators can uh, uh, address to a large extent. Uh, purge obsolete data, defective data, unneeded data. And then finally, the issue is of metadata, and that has been talked about this morning. Well, in some sense, metadata is more important than data. But there might be standards for metadata, but most people don't bother. Like uh, it was said in the morning, that they will just uh, fill some of the entries and not really bother with it. And uh, that really reduces the value of the data and the value of preserving the data. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Well, uh, I want to uh, thank all of our presenters.